I'm reading this morning from Psalm 67 from the authorized version of the scriptures. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along at the verses that we are going to be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse at the verses and scriptures we are going to be looking at. Check me out. Hold me accountable. Check me out. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Make sure I'm not taking anything out of context. If you have, if I'm reading too fast at any point during this video, pause it and search the scriptures yourself. Search the scriptures, whether these things be so. The thumbnail you're going to notice, obviously. The cross, its meaning and significance. Before we get into that, Psalm 67. Follow me along. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us, Shelah. That thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. And Jesus Christ himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay? That thy way may be known upon earth. The way of the cross. And thy saving health among all nations. His way is known upon the earth. The way of the cross. The way of the cross, death, rebirth, and offense. Death, death to self, rebirth, being born again, being made a new creature, and making of many one body in Christ. And because of that, Three, offense. Cross is an absolute offense to the self-righteous, to the ungodly. More on that in a little bit. Let's continue. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth Silah talking about when he comes back at his second coming okay with us who get redeemed caught up okay and notice this already in Psalm 67 okay you have in verse 2 that thy way may be known upon earth that thy saving health um, that thy saving health among thy saving health excuse me excuse me among all nations you have verse 2 redemption Thy way, the way of the cross. And then here in verse 4, O oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy. Thou shalt judge the people righteously as a righteous judge sitting upon his throne in Jerusalem during the kingdom of heaven. And govern the nations upon earth, Shelah. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people pra praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear, shall fear him. Yes, because in the kingdom of heaven, if people don't come up to worship him, for example, in the Feast of Tabernacles, he's going to withhold rain from those nations, sustenance. But I found this a very beautiful way to begin the Psalm 67 because the turning point is very uh, quick within Psalm 67. Seven verses. Seven. Isn't that something? Okay? At verse 3. At verse 3 is where the turning point for this psalm is. Let the people praise thee. While God's mercy and his saving health his way and saving health. The way of the cross. The way of the cross. When it comes to the cross, you hear a lot of people talk about the cross, the cross, the cross. 
And some people end up making an idol out of the cross and worshiping the cross rather than the one who was crucified upon the cross. Is the cross in and of itself an altar? When you search the scriptures, uh, because today's video is basically, we're going to be uh, focusing in on the word cross itself, okay? Kind of a word study, if you will, kind of, but it's a little bit more deeper than that, okay? And besides, word studies are not my, my big strong point. Uh, for that, that's Brother Alexander Hartley or Mr. Philip Newton. you got to give him his credit on that. He does quite a word study really does but but okay this is basically we're going to be looking at the word cross within the scriptures not every appearance not every appearance okay not every appearance because we don't need to but is the cross an altar the cross was used as an altar you could say but is it an altar because what is an altar somewhere, a place, or an object, or whatever, where people offer sacrifice, right? But see, the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ was only one time. Whereas the Catholic, as you'll see, as you see in the thumbnail, to the Catholic, Christ is still on the cross. That's a problem. That's a problem if you are worshiping a Christ who is still on the cross. He's not still on the cross. He's resurrected. But is the cross an altar? A sacrifice was made upon the cross. Yes, the cross of Christ, yes. But it was one and done. Hence, it is not an altar where continual sacrifice is made. You see in church buildings, the altars and in Catholic church buildings where they have the, 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 the cookie and the cup and stuff like that. And they are continuing, continuing, uh, continually excuse me, sacrificing Christ. They, they, even say, they even say that. Because to the Catholic, they turn the little cookie into the actual flesh with the woo -hoo -hoo -hoo, right? And the wine into the actual blood. And they will say, they are sacrificing the Lord again. They, they say that brazenly. So, in that respect, is the cross an altar? No, because it's not a continual sacrifice. The cross was used as an altar, but it is not an altar. Because an altar is what? Somewhere where you give sacrifice. Meaning, giving continual sacrifice. Hmm. And the cross was one and done. The cross was one, one and done. But what is the cross? Again, it's death. Going to the cross is death. Okay? Death. Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood on the cross to make atonement for sin. And in his death brought in this current dispensation, the New Testament. Okay? But see, he, he is resurrected. He is alive. He is risen from the dead. He's not still on the cross. See, if you, if you worship Christ like you see in the thumbnail, if you worship Christ who is still on the cross, well, then it isn't finished, is it? And if you serve a Christ who is still on the cross, then there's something you can do to save yourself. In there. The cross is death to yourself. Number two, it is new life. It is new life. And we're going to look at this. It is new life. But also in the cross. Remember in the scriptures where it says the temple, uh, the, the veil in the temple was rent in twain? Signifying removing that thing so that people can go directly to God through Jesus Christ, who is God our Father. Okay? The temple, the, uh, the veil in the temple was rent in twain. And in him, of many people, making one new man to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. A bridge bringing Jews and Gentiles together. So it's death and new life and also bringing those 
outside together in one body. And see, because of that, it is an offense. The cross is offensive because it is death. But through that death, it is new life. And see, because of that death and new life, and bringing others outside onto, into one body in him, it's offensive. The word cross itself, the word cross itself, uh, I forget how many times it appears in Scripture, but um, the first appearance in Scripture is in Matthew chapter 10. Okay? Now we're getting to it, okay? Had to, had to go through that. Matthew chapter 10, okay? We're not going to go through every appearance of the word cross in Scripture. We don't need to, okay? But Matthew chapter 10. Technically, still in the Old Testament. Chronologically, this is in the uh, books that are labeled the New Testament. But when, in, when you read Hebrews chapter 9, and we're going to look at this, the New Testament begins with the death of the testator. So before Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, it's still doctrinally, doctrinally, I should have said, not technically, excuse me. Doctrinally, still the Old Testament. The law was still binding. Okay? So, Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 39. On to 39. Fear ye not, therefore, fear ye not, ah, excuse me, 32 on to verse 39. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Now some will go right right away and say, that, what about that in, uh, what is that, Second Timothy? It's like if we deny him, we will he will deny us. We've already covered that, okay? This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Doctrinally still under the law in the Old Testament. He hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture. So when he's talking here, he's talking in context of the kingdom of heaven, and the kingdom of heaven is all works, okay? And also, too, in context of the time of Jacob's trouble, which is faith and works, okay? God, they have to have faith that he's going to come back like he says, but if they take the mark of the beast, they're done for, see? Okay? got to rightly divide the word of truth. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection. This is talking about salvifically. This is talking, yes, this is talking salvifically about your salvation. But see, it's, uh, it's finished. See, you got to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Okay? you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Let's continue. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I, am, I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to send a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own house. And he's quoting Micah 7, verse 6, okay? He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. First appearance. Look, how, look at this context, okay? Look at this context that where this appears first. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth, loseth his life for my sake shall find it. So there's the first appearance of cross in the scriptures. And look at the context in which our Number one. Who uses it first? Our Lord Jesus Christ. In what context? In context of separation. In, of separation. Putting him first. A death. A death to what? A death to yourself. Look at that. Okay? Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. After the death, burial, and resurrection, has, is there peace on the earth? No. <laughs> Come on. Okay, you heretics. 
Come on. Is there peace on the earth today? No. There isn't. There isn't peace on the earth. Not yet. There will be. There will be. Kingdom of heaven. Yeah. There will be peace on the earth. Yes. But is there peace today? No. No. Individually. We can have peace in Christ. Yes. But there ain't peace today. There ain't peace today. That's coming. That's what Isaiah, what is it? Chapter 9. Uh, the Prince of Peace. He will bring in peace at his second coming. See, There ain't peace today. You got these nitwits, and I'm being polite, talk about peace, 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 this. They, there is no peace. <laughs> these false prophets that preach peace, peace, there is no peace. There is no peace. The only peace you can have is knowing that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay? Well, let's continue, okay? For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And the man's foes shall be they of his own house. So your own family, your own loved ones, when you come to the true Christ of the Scriptures, by His terms, the cross. See, so many people want to boot the door out of the way. Jesus Christ is the door. Okay? So many people want to boot the door out of the way and, find, and climb up some other way. A way that isn't death. But see, that's the way God has chosen. He has chosen the way of death in order to bring new life and peace in that new life in Him amongst many of your brethren and sisters. Okay? And, I'm, and we all know this. How many of you are, you know, are at war with your family? I know a, a dear young brother who's being, who the Lord is using in his nation. Ah! Uh, his family. His family is Catholic. Button heads. Because he serves the true Christ. They are looking for that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? My best friend. The only one that's left that um, that he cares for is his mother. But the rest of his so-called family? Shh. My own family. Okay? It's like that with you too. And that's a death. That's a death. Isn't it? And a man's foe shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. He that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Now this doesn't mean literally. Okay, that because apparently there are people out there who will walk around with a cross, an actual literal cross. That's not what he's talking about. It's not what he's talking about. Okay? We are made alive in Christ Jesus. But we die daily because it is contrary to the world and most of all, contrary to the flesh, which the lost worship. Okay? Very okay. Now, go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Okay? Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 on to verse 28 okay Matthew chapter 24 uh, Matthew chapter 16 verses 24 on to verse 28 then said Jesus unto his disciples if any man will come after me let him deny himself deny himself if any man come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me now that's not talking about a literal, actual, physical cross. What is the cross symbolic of? Death. Death. Serving Christ is a death, isn't it? Because you are what? You are to mortify what? Your members here on earth. Like it says in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 under verse 7. And we might be looking at that today, I don't know. But, 
We are to kill, mortify our flesh, put it down, right? We're not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we may prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God. I just totally brandized that. Make your part, okay? But see, it's a death. It's a death that leads to new life. That life in Christ. Be, be of good cheer. He has overcome the world. Okay, It's new life in Him. But be see, unto the self-righteous, unto those who, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Those who do not deny themselves. The cross is an offense because it's a death and it's new life. It's also very offensive. Ask any Jew. Ask any Jew. Of how offensive the cross really is. Okay? Verse 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Compromise a little bit. You know, you, you, this, again, this thing about going to extremes. It's so, uh, Christianity tells you it's okay to do a little of the worldly things. It's okay to sit there and waste eight to ten hours of your life watching television. Okay? Christianity says it's okay. Christianity says it's okay to do things like the world because God doesn't want you to die like that. You're, you're going to extremes. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump, see. Well, what is the cross? It's death. It's number one, death. Okay? It's number one, death. Death. Death to yourself. Death to yourself. So, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. Our life is hid, and it's hid in Christ. Isn't it? Hmm? And right here, talking about those who compromise. A little leaven won't hurt you, right? A little leaven leaven at the whole lump. A little won't hurt you, right? For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or well, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Talking about his second coming. Okay. Now, note verse 27 that we just read. Now, we're going to clear something up here in verse 28. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. There are those out there, uh, for example, this movie, remember that movie, The Highlander, about immortals and stuff like that? Stuff like that is based off of this. There are those out there who say that there are people living uh, uh, immortal right now because they haven't seen Christ coming in his kingdom talking about the second coming. Okay? What is this talking about? What is this verse particularly talking about? Um, Matthew chapter 21 on this, okay? Verily I say unto you, there shall there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. So there are people out there that actually want to tell you, uh, according, and they'll twist this verse, that say there are people that are alive since the time of Jesus here uh, in 2020 who were alive during Jesus' time because, uh, and they go to this verse. What is this talking about? Well, let's look. Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 unto verse 11. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, they sent, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Lose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them. And straightway he will send them. And this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. 
And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David, King of the Jews. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which is the city of the great king, okay, Jerusalem, the city of the great king, the son of David, the king of the Jews, okay, and when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, who is this? And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee, okay, so what does that mean? Go back to Matthew chapter 16, verse 28, Verily I say unto you, there shall there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Son of Man. What well, says Son of David? Shut up. The king, the king came into his kingdom. Jerusalem, the city of the great king. That is what he was talking about. When Jesus rode into Jerusalem sitting on an ass, okay, and they were saying Hosanna uh, in the highest. He was saying, Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. It's not that there are mortal people who are alive since the crucifixion of Jesus or since the time of Jesus alive walking on the earth today, okay? That's, that's nonsense. That's insanity. That's whoop! craziness, okay? No, when he rode into Jerusalem, the city of the great king, okay? That's what that, that's what he was talking about. And he, he fulfilled that, okay? Does that mean that some people dropped dead then? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe some did? I don't know. But that's what he was talking about. He wasn't, he wasn't referring on to his second coming, meaning that there are immortals out there chopping pe uh, other people's heads off until the time of reckoning? Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! -hoo! Okay? I had to address that. I had to address that. Because I, I, that, that's just silly. But now let's go to Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Verses 34 on to verse 38. Okay? Sorry for the little rabbit there. But there are people actually that teach that and say that. And they twist that verse. Okay? They twist that verse. Mark chapter 8, verses 34 on to verse 38. Again, and when he had called the people unto him with his disciples, also he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. Deny himself. Yourself. Your flesh. What you want. It's not about you. It's a death. Whosoever shall come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. I die daily. But see, his grace is sufficient for me. Because his strength is made perfect in my weakness. Okay? Paul talks about this in length. About how every day he bears in his body the marks of the Lord Jesus. And that um, though we die daily, yet we are renewed daily by his grace. Okay? It's a death unto this. Unto this. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> unto this. You know, your flesh that you worship so much. For whosoever, again, will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit if a man, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with, his, with the holy angels. This generation. Why? Because at that very time, he was offering them the kingdom of heaven. He had not died yet. When he says, this generation, this generation, okay? That generation that was there because the king was present on the earth. 
Okay? Because he was offering them the kingdom of heaven. They didn't accept it. Did they? No. And, and let's go now to Mark chapter 10. Check this out. This, this is good. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10, verses 17 on to verse 22. Mark chapter 10, verses 17 on to verse 22. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good Master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. See, this rich young ruler guy, he only saw man. He didn't see, He didn't have the eyes to see, to know that he was seeing the Father, God. Didn't see that, okay? He did not see. All he saw was a man, someone who could give him benefit in this worldly life. Which indeed, our Lord Jesus Christ can have. But you got to forsake everything and die to yourself okay so he's like good master and our Lord's like why callest thou me good there's none good but one that is God Jesus is not denying that he is God in this verse no he's saying it's like look you you're calling me good master I'm God the Father okay you don't and you don't see me as that why are you calling me good <laughs> okay <laughs> He's the son of David, the king of the Jews, God the Father. But the rich young ruler didn't have eyes to see. He only saw he only saw a meal to go for. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 19. Thou knowest the commandments, and all those who are saving themselves by keeping the commandments. Right away, I think of Mark the Messenger. Perfect example. Okay? Who, who rejects the redemption of the purchase possession and once saved, always saved? Guy's lost, okay? But see, people who want to keep the commandments, they glorify themselves. Oh, they, they put down their flesh, but see, in doing that, it's a glorification of themselves. See, that's what they're doing. So, and our Lord's like, well, you know that he... <laughs> yeah. I don't know, it's the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus beholding him, look, 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 look at that, don't look at me, don't look at me right now, look at that verse. Loved him. See, you got these Christians who say, don't judge. When anybody says, don't judge, the red flag ought to come up right away. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. You're either dealing with a heretic or a coadjutor or someone lost or whatever. Because when you hear, especially a Christian say, don't judge, it's always to defend sin. Every single time. Don't judge me. That you're in sin. Okay? Watch for that. Watch for that. The video, Mark the Messenger, uh, that I, the Lord had me to do against Mark the Messenger. I, 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 I can't remember how many times, how many times so many people said, don't judge, don't judge. The guy's a lost heretic. And they're saying, don't judge. Warning. <laughs> okay. But look at that verse. Then Jesus beholding him, loved him. How do you show love to someone? By telling them the truth. By telling them the truth. But see, love to Christianity is... Shh, hush. Don't scare them. Don't tell them about their sins. That's love to Christianity. That isn't love of the church of the living God. That isn't the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing, one thing thou lackest. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. Mm -hmm. 
But he did all the commandments. But there's one thing he lacked. And he was sad at that saying and went away grieved. For he had great possessions. And we got to add uh, verse 23. And Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God. But he did all the commandments. But see, he didn't die to himself. Take up the cross and follow me. Die. Die. For something new to be brought forth, dear friend. Something has to die. How many Christians are there who have just, as putting on a t-shirt, have put on the accoutrement of Christianity or put the facade on? But underneath, they haven't died to nothing. They ain't dead to themselves. They ain't dead to that. You call yourself a Christian, but yet there's no dying to yourself. There's no dying to this. You're only that in word, not in actuality. The cross is death, my friend. Death to yourself. Death to yourself. Now go to Luke. Check this out. This is beautiful. Go to Luke chapter 9. Not Acts, Brad. What are you doing? Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Verses 23 on to verse 27. Luke chapter 9. Verses 23 on to verse 27. Again. And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. And follow me. Daily. Did not Paul say, uh, I die daily? Paul said that. One, so one second, one second. Sorry about that. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 31. I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. What is, and what does he say here? Uh, um, verses 29 on to verse 32 in 1 Corinthians 15. Else, what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, uh, beasts, un, uh, unregenerate men, okay? What advantage is it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Go back to Luke. Verse 23 again. And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Remember, we're supposed to mortify, put down our flesh, kill our flesh. We are to die to ourselves daily. And then you get some wimpy Christian coming around. Well, you're going to extremes that God doesn't want us to go to. Really? Really? See, you say that so you can justify gratify. excuse me, gratifying your flesh, living to your flesh, smoking your cigarettes, drinking your booze, watching your television, playing your video games, or listening to hellish music, whatever it is. You're doing that to justify yourself. We're to die to ourselves daily. To death. To death. To death. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself? Or be cast away? Look at that verse. Look at how that's worded there. Look at how that's worded there. If any man will lose his soul, okay, we've already read. But look at how that is worded there. Isn't that interesting? Don't look at me. Look at the scriptures, okay? Come on. This isn't a game. This isn't for your entertainment. Wake up there, pal. Okay? Look at that verse. 
For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself? Or be cast away? And that's something. Don't you lose yourself when you sit for eight hours watching that damned television? Don't you lose yourself when you put in your earbuds or whatever or put on the headphones or crank up the satanic CCM music, right? How Oh, oh, you can really lose yourself playing the video games, can't you? Yeah. What happens? Now, are you cast away today if you are the church of the living God and fall into those things? No. No. But if you deny him, he will deny us. Not salvifically today, but in blessings and protection. You go to the devil for comfort, and you're of the church of the living God? You deny him by denying yourself? By giving in to your flesh? Why should the Lord protect you from the onslaught and from the poison that will infect you from going on to the devil? No wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of those who turn aside. It shall not cleave unto me. Have you ever have you noticed yet that sin cleaves to you, to your to you like dung on the bottom of your sandal? Have you figured that one out yet? Verse 26. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. When he shall come in his own glory and in his father's and of the holy angels. Again, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. He's offering the kingdom of heaven unto them. During the time of Jacob's trouble and also the kingdom of heaven. Okay? This is not, this does not apply for us today because this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? He was offering them the kingdom of heaven. Again, you have to rightly divide the word of truth, my friend. Or you become Mark the Messenger. Okay? Verse 27. But I tell you of a truth. There be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Now, is that a reference onto the kingdom of heaven? No. The context. The context. It's not talking about the kingdom of heaven. What is this talking about? Let's go to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Kingdom of God. There is, okay, could this be kingdom of heaven? Maybe. 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 Okay, maybe. It's talking about, it's, kingdom of God is defined by its context. Okay? But this is not, okay, verse 26. Okay, he's talking about when he shall come in his own glory. Talking about the second coming. Okay? So, so, is he talking about the kingdom of heaven in verse 27? No, he is not. He's talking about the kingdom of God, which is Acts chapter tw uh, 1, verses 6 on to verse 8. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou, the, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Talking about the kingdom of heaven, which they rejected. Okay? Which they rejected. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts part of the earth. Okay? Now let's look in Acts chapter 2 verses 1 on to verse 8. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, Pentecost 50. Okay? They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a, like as of fire. Like as of fire. Okay? And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit, capital S, gave them utterance. And there, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. 
Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And of course, the tongues and these wicked, charismatic, and Pentecostal people, they, they think that blah, 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 your prayer language, the devil's gotten a hold of you. You need to repent. You need to listen to what he is saying to you. Because you are filled with devils. Your prayer language. Give me a break. The languages, the tongues are defined in verses 9 on to verse uh, 11, which we're not going to look at, okay? The tongues that are being talked about here in verse 4, other tongues were known languages. Not this blah, 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 blah. That's devil speak. Verse 6. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Verse 7. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we speak every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? The kingdom of God, spiritual, came, okay? Because the Holy Ghost was given unto men as a permanent residence in Acts. So the kingdom of God, the spiritual, came. See, the New Testament begins with the death, okay? He went up to heaven. He, we serve a risen Christ, okay? We serve a risen Christ. A crucified Christ? Christ was crucified, but he, he ain't still on the cross, dear friend. And if Christ is still on the cross, it ain't finished. Hence, if Christ is still on the cross, then there's something that you can still do, isn't there? You can go ahead and make up all these laws and try to follow all the laws, right, Mr. Messenger, right? Because you serve a crucified. Christ, who is still on the cross. But we who are truly saved, we serve the risen Christ. And we die to ourselves. And see, if you serve a Christ who is still on the cross, then it's still all about your flesh. Because, oh, I keep the commandments. I do this. I do that, see. Okay? And now uh, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and about this thing about, you know, the tongue and stuff. Uh, you, 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 can tell the, you can tell people 101 times the truth about tongues and rightly dividing the word of truth. And 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 on verse 24. For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Now the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. But there's another wisdom being talked about here. That wisdom is the wisdom of man, which is not of heaven, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. So, the fear of man. The fear of man, not the fear of the Lord. There are two wisdoms. There are two wisdoms. One that comes from God, which is the fear of the Lord. And one of man, fear of man. Okay? Which is earthly, sensual, led by your senses, and devilish. Every single one of these tongue-talking, charismatic, people. Okay? It's all about their senses. It's all about their emotions. Christianity is a religion based on feeling. Well, the faith once delivered onto the saints is about death. That leads to new life. In dying to self, it leads unto new life. But for after that in the world, for after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Preaching. And how shall they hear unless someone be sent? You know, uh, uh, Romans chapter 10, verses 14 on, you idiots, you easy believism devils. They never deal with Romans 10, 14. Shut up. It's talking about those who go out to preach. Okay? Okay? Get your head out from betwixt your buttocks sometime, please. I'm being polite with that, with those people when I say that, okay? 
For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. And isn't it, again, using Mark the Messenger as an example, look at his videos. They're all seven signs this, sign this, sign that. He himself, the whack job crazy devil that he is, he thinks he's an actual Hebrew. For the Jews require a sign. And we walk by faith, not by sight. See, you need a sign today, right? You need a sign. You're walking according to the flesh. You haven't died to your flesh. You call yourself a Christian, and you need a sign. Seven signs this, seven signs that. You haven't. You're not dead to yourself yet. You, are you saved? You need a sign. <laughs> it's like these. It's like these guys who. Put these preachers on pedestals. You need a hero, right? <laughs> Give me a break. There are those of you out there who hold certain preachers. I'm not going to name names. But there are those of you out there who hold certain preachers as your hero. There must be something wrong with me because I... I I see that as the most insane thing to have a mortal man who's going to either be at the great white throne or at the judgment seat of Christ who's going to die just like you that you're going to make them your hero. That, 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 doesn't, that doesn't add up to me. I, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. For the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. And tongues are for a sign. The sign gifts were there for the Jews. Okay? Okay? And after Acts chapter 7, when the Jews officially rejected the kingdom of God, the spiritual, us Gentiles were brought in. And isn't it interesting? In Acts chapter 8, the first to be saved as we are saved right now today in this dispensation, okay? After that, the Jews rejected the gospel, okay? The kingdom of God. It was the same dispensation uh, after the death of the testator that brought in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, okay? Time of the Gentiles. But after Acts chapter 7, after that, the Jews officially rejected the kingdom of God, the spiritual, the gospel, and us Gentiles were officially grafted in, who was the first Gentile according to, according to Scripture to be grafted into the tree of the Jew? It was a Hamite! An Ethiopian! So there are those out there, my dear, dear Hamitic brethren and sisters. There are those out there who say that Christianity is the white man's religion. You're right! Christianity is the white man's religion, but the faith that was once handed, uh, excuse me, the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, that's to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Where there is no Jew, where there is no Greek, where there is no barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, male or female, not black, not white, not Asiatic, in Christ, in salvation, there's no distinction. But you're right, my Hermetic brethren, Sisters, you are right. Christianity is the white man's religion. You're right. You're right. Amen, you're right. But the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, there's no distinction in that faith. Culturally, there's all kinds of distinction, yes. But as pertaining to salvation, there ain't no distinction. Even though some of you want there to be, but there isn't. And proof positive, the very first, after the rejection of the kingdom of God, the gospel by the Jewish people, the first Gentile recorded in scripture within this dispensation to be grafted into the tree of the Jew was a Hamite of Ethiopia. You, you, you go upon some sand, you go out going around saying, well, Jesus Christ is for the white man. Shut up. Shut up. How dare you? How dare you? 
In salvation, there's no distinction. It's a death. You have to die. You have to die to yourself. And when you come along, along saying that within Christ Jesus, within salvation, that there is distinction within salvation, you're not dead to yourself yet, are you? You're a chosen one, huh? Yeah. Elect and non-elect. That's all flesh there, pal. We didn't finish. We're going to read to verse 24 in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called the way of the cross, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Christ crucified. He died and shed his blood to make atonement for sin. He was buried, but guess what, guess what, guess what? He raised again the third day according to the scriptures. See, he's a resurrected Savior. See, you like, like the thumbnail. Christ ain't on the cross anymore, buddy. But see, for those of you who don't want to die to yourself, leave them on there. And put that in that that thing that the Catholics like, the uh, like you'll see in the th like you saw in the thumbnail. Leave them on the cross. That way we can justify ourselves by still keeping the commandments. Because while Christ is still on the cross, guess what? It's not finished. It's not finished. If Christ is still on the cross, it ain't finished, buddy. That means you can go ahead and do all your. Uh, works and speak words to no profit. Go ahead. Because he's still on the cross. But he isn't. He isn't. Okay? He is not still on the cross, dear friend. Okay? Because, okay, and, and here's, here's a place for this. John chapter 19. John chapter 19. Verses 28 on to verse 37. Okay? John chapter 19, verses 28 on verse 37. After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, meaning him going on to the cross and all that was fulfilled, okay? Okay, I just lost my place. Saith, I thirst. Now there was set a, a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled the sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. It is finished. It's done. What happened? As soon as he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost and died. He died. Okay? Died. Who was on the cross? God was. The fullness of the Godhead bodily, spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, the Holy Ghost, soul, God the Father, the body, which was the Word, made flesh. Okay? God in His totality was on the cross. Not one of three, uh, one of three persons. That's satanic. That's blasphemy. See, if total God w wasn't on that cross, then you're, you, you're still in your sins. See, and that's the thing about the Trinitarians, the Catholics. They worship, look at them. You know that, that crooked bent cross with their Christ on it, with that uh, Pope that Francis walks around with, okay? And the, cru the Catholic uh, crosses, their crucifixes with Jesus on it, okay? Because they're the Catholic. Christ is still on the cross. <laughs> well, no, he is. No, we don't. Explain then your crucifixes. With Christ still on the cross. The thumbnail. Taken from the Catholic Church building. <laughs> See. If only one part of a, a three-person trinity was on the cross, then... Totally, God was not 
the one who made atonement for your sins. While he's still on the cross, it's not finished. But let's keep reading here. The Jews, therefore, besought, uh, uh, the Jews, therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, for that Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was dead already and brake not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. Remember when our Lord said, you've got to be born of water and of blood, talking a natural birth and then a second root birth after you die. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture saith, they shall look on him whom they pierced. Of course, they took him down. He was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Leave Christ on the cross. It's not finished. Now go to Luke chapter... What is that? 10? 14. Not, not that. Where are you going, Brad? Luke chapter 14 now. Luke chapter 14. Of all the times for my email notifications to go off. You see my subscribers. The amount of emails I get is ugh, crazy. Luke chapter 14, verses 25 on to verse 33. And there, uh, yes, yes. Luke chapter 14, verses 25 on to verse 33. And there was, went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Now we've talked about this at length before, we're just going to touch on it easy. He's not saying that you're supposed to hate your father or your mother, or your own children. He's not saying that. Well, it says hate. Yes, it says hate. But, what is it talking about? That putting something before the Lord Jesus Christ. And his own life also? So, if you put yourself before the Lord Jesus Christ, you can't be his disciple. You put father, mother, family, friends, your children, above Jesus Christ. You can't be his disciple. Paul talks about, I count all things as loss. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean that you treat your family or your, your loved ones or your children. Uh, no, no. And our Lord would not require that of you. But see what happens. A Christian parent wants the best for their children that they never had, hence making their children an idol, hence child abuse, okay? And they put their children through ringers of hell because they want for their children what they never had. Child abuse, okay? That's different. When you make a child an idol, you're putting something above Christ. But see, when they're doing that themselves, they're still worshiping themselves. Hence, you're putting something before Christ. You know, your flesh, okay? Yourself, okay? Yea, and his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. You're talking about, shut up with your extremes, man. Woman, woman. What does this have to offer you? Amusement. Entertainment. A little happiness and joy, huh? <laughs> Three-part video on happy, happy, joy, joy. If I can remember, will be in the description box. What does this have to offer you? Nothing that's going to last forever. Why do you think you, you got to light up that cigarette again? 
Why do you think you got to keep drinking and drinking and drinking? Why do you think you got to snort again? Why do you think you got, you know, why do you got to think of pop another pill? Because it doesn't last forever. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Come after. How do we come after the? Because this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Uh, Paul gives us that example on how to do it to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile, also to the Greek. The Greek is a Gentile. Paul gives us a really good example on how to do that. But which of you? Now here, check this out. And here is where the people who boot the door out of the way come in. The people smiley. Oh, just like, just believe. Here's where the swaggarts come in. Yeah, Jimmy Swaggart, hey, Jimmy Swaggart is a lying devil guiding you to hell. Listen to the one who's warning you. There you go, brother. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it. If you count it, the cost. See, our Lord talks about you know, uh, you know, uh, certain people when uh, the, the, the 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 stones, the seeds parable. You know how it fell on a certain ground, and after a while, after persecution comes, they are offended, or the cares of this world come up and choke the word. Okay. Some people are willing to believe on the true Jesus, but then when they, but then when they understand, it's like, whoa, what, you, what, 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 wait, wait a minute, you mean I, I, I can't continue to go to bars, I can't continue to watch pornography, I, I should give up uh, Hollywood movies and abstain from worldly things and get rid of, I don't like that, I don't want that, I, I like doing that, I enjoy doing that, so what happens? You, you run into some schmuck who boots the door out of the way. It's like, you don't have to do that. You believe, right? See? You believe, right? You shouldn't do that. But don't worry, it's not going to... Because you believe, and hence you save yourself. You're glorifying your flesh, and you save yourself. It's not finished then. Because, see, that kind of a Christ that you're worshiping, that, you know, oh, I just believe, is a Christ who is still on the cross. And see when they figure it once, you know, some of them like, are willing to believe on the true Lord Jesus Christ. But as our Lord said in the book of John, it's like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You guys who believe on me, wait a minute, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out, okay? If ye continue in my word, you ye are my disciples indeed, okay? Now, do we do that 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? No, no, no. And those looking to justify themselves will bring up that argument. Okay, no, we don't. But see, if you choose the world over Christ and continue therein and justify it, I don't think you're saved. We all make mistakes. We all sin every day. You say you don't sin, you're a liar. You lie and your breath stink, and I can smell it all the way over here in Illinois. We all make mistakes. But see, the Spirit of Christ who is in you, if you are truly saved, born again, and two things, he's going to chasten you, and if you ain't going to get chastened, if you're not getting chastened and you're actually saved, uh, you better be careful because he might be getting close to kill you. Because... How you represent Christ reflects Him. And if you're truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, living as a devil, you, you, your, your days are numbered. Your days are numbered. My email is going crazy right now as I'm making this video. Go figure. Okay? But, we all make mistakes. But see, there are those out there who don't count the cost. They hear, they hear a Christianity and that gives them that they could continue to do the evil things that our Lord hates. And yet, 
be right with God. They want their cake and have it too. When the true Christ of the scriptures, God our Father, it's a death. It's a death that leads unto a new life. A life that's full of glory for the Lord. And nothing to do for you. He sustains you as his vessel, yes. But see, it's not about it's not about me. It's not about you. But see, when you boot the door out the way, it's all about you, you pompous. Uh. Hence, y'all serve a Christ who's still on the cross. And if Christ is still on the cross, it ain't finished. Let's continue. Lest happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and is not able to finish. But what king going to make war against another king? Sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand. Or else, while the other is of yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage and desireth conditions for peace. Of peace, excuse me. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, ties it up right there, he cannot be my disciple. Right there, verse 33, ties that up in a night, it's a little pretty bow. Counting the cost. What, what's more valuable to you? What's more valuable to you? The one who died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scripture? Who loved, past tense, you, and gave, past tense, himself for you? Or is that stuff, your television, your music, your drugs, your drugs, whatever it is. So many out there want to come to this Jesus that, the Christianity, that Christianity preaches. But when they hear about the true Jesus Christ, you're judging, you're a Pharisee, right? Right? God is love. God, don't judge. Just shut up and go wipe your rear end. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. The cross is death. Death to yourself. See, that's the repentance. Repenting of you. Our Lord loved the rich young ruler and told him uh, one thing you lack you need to crucify you need to crucify yourself die to yourself not literally not literally but more you know mortify put down kill the flesh okay and see Catholics take that and they whip themselves and they do it it's not like that but see this is where the heretics come in. This is where the heretics come in. And say, hey, don't worry about it. You just believe. that You shouldn't do that stuff. No, you should. No, you should. But it doesn't matter if you do because you're still going to heaven no matter what. So go ahead. Again, you easy believism heretics, the Lord means nothing to you. You prove it in the way you act. Okay? Now, go to Matthew chapter 27. Go back to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27, we want verses 34 on to verse 44. <coughs> uh, uh, yes. They, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him, and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophets. Prophet! They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation written, this is Jesus, the King of the Jews, over his head. I have heard some people say that 
the cross that Christ was crucified on was a headless cross, just like a lowercase t, okay, or a capital T, that it's like, and set up over his head. So the, the cross that Christ was crucified on was one of these jobbers, not a capital T, okay? Then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and, and another on, his, on the left, excuse me. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and elders said, Get a load of this. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him, come, let him now come down from the cross. We will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. Look at verse 42. He saved others. Himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. What they have? Thank you, pardon. What they have? Let's look in the scriptures about this, okay? If, if he would have come down from the cross, what would they have done? Do you think they really would have believed him? Give me a break. Give me a break. Uh, let, let's prove this. Uh, go to Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15. Uh, uh, Mark chapter 15 first. Okay, excuse me. Mark chapter 15. Mark chapter 15 verses 31 and verse 32. <clears throat> Again. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that buildest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking said among themselves with the scribes, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. Again. So they're saying, come down and we'll believe you. And you know, some one might say what it says, what our Lord said in John chapter 4 verse 48, just one verse. John chapter 4 verse 48. Okay. John chapter 4, verse 48, what does our Lord say? Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. So then, okay, if he would have done that, come off the cross, would they have believed? Hmm. Uh, John chapter 10. John chapter 10. John chapter 10, verses 22 on to verse 33. John chapter 10, verses 22 on to verse 33. Did they believe the Lord before when he gave them signs and wonders? Raising the dead, healing the sick. Did they believe him before? So what makes you think that if he were to come off the cross that they would have believed him then? They wouldn't have. They would have said, he said, that's the devil, and they would have killed, tried to kill him that way. It's like these atheists. You say, prove to me your God exists. You'll get your proof eventually, don't worry. But any proof I could give you isn't going to make a difference, is it? And then they act like a little schoolyard girl. Well, that's because you can't prove it. That's, a lot of the people who have attacked me, that's their mentality. They're little children, they're little school kids. Well, you can't do it. <laughs> But, look at this. John chapter 10, verses 22 and verse 33. Okay? And it was at Jerusalem, at the Feast of the ded Dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Okay? Look, look at this. Then came the Jews round about him, and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. <laughs> tell us plainly. Rose the dead, healed the sick, fed thousands with miraculously uh, bread appearing miraculously. It's like, whoa, how's this happening? <laughs> it's the Lord our Father Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. Same with the fishies. Raised the dead, casting out devils. What more do you need? 
And look at look at our Lord's response. I love this. Jesus answered, Hoi vei, as the Hebrew people say, Hoi vei, right? Hoi vei. <laughs> Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, <laughs> they bear witness of me. All the miracles he had already done. Did they believe him right here? No. No, but, but check it. Let's keep reading. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my father's hand, out of my hand, excuse me. My father which gave them me is greater than all, because the soul is better than your is greater than your body. Okay, that's what that's talking about. It's not a three person satanic trinity okay no the soul is greater than the body okay the soul is greater than the skin suit okay all right my father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand i and my father are one in essence oh no no i and my father are one one god Spirit, soul, and body. You can't see the soul that is within your body, can you? But your soul is greater than your physical body. Okay? Okay? It's not a trinity. Trinity is satanic. But I and my Father are one. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. One body, one being. Okay? One being, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, okay, okay, one God, and people are, well, well, Jesus never said that, never said, I am God, Jesus never said, I am God, he just said, I am, he didn't have to put in God, because him saying, I am, taking the title that uh, he said unto Moses in the burning bush, calling himself the Father, but, look at the Jews' reaction. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, okay? They asked in verse 22, if you're the Christ, tell us plainly. He says, Oy vey, I told you, and you didn't believe me. And then he just says, he's God the Father. And what do they do? They take up stones to stone him. You think they would have believed him if he came off the cross? No, they would not have. Give me a break. Give me a break. There are those out there today, if Christ were to miraculously appear to that person <laughs> and say, I'm Jesus, they wouldn't believe it. Unfortunately, there are some psychopaths out there when a devil appears to them saying they're Jesus, they believe that. You're crazy, pal. Okay? Unfortunately, people believe that. But it doesn't work that way. Okay? We've, we've talked about that. Checked out the refuting the charismatic stuff that we've done. Okay? But they took up stones to, uh, to kill him. And look at what they said. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed you from my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou being a man makest thyself God. <laughs> uh, the Jews, the Jews, the Hebrews, sure did seem to think that the uh, Lord Jesus Christ just called himself the Father. And then you got these Trinitarian twits. Jesus is not the Father. <laughs> the, the, the Hebrews believed that Jesus said that he was the Father. That's why they were going to stone him. Again, okay, again. Would they have believed? No, they wouldn't have. Uh, uh, go to um, uh, John chapter 12. John chapter 12, verses 37 out of verse 41. <clears throat> but though he had, uh, John 12, 37 out of 41. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. 
that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, Isaiah 53, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, He hath blinded their eyes, and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. That's ta referencing, and I, have, I even have that written down, Isaiah chapter 6, verses 9 on to verse 10. You look that up on your own time, okay? These things said Isaiah, Isaiah, when he saw his glory and spake of him. Why, why can't they see the obvious? Because there's no death of themselves. Why do these Christians don't see the obvious? Because the Christ that they serve is still on the cross. They don't serve a resurrected Savior. Even though on their Astarte thing, uh, they talk about the resurrection, the resurrection. Uh, but they still don't believe it. Because again, a Christ who is still on the cross, it's not finished. Hence, the law is still operable, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, okay. And um, I just an uh, Old Testament reference here, a couple of them. Go to Hosea. Hosea. Hosea is right after Daniel. Hosea chapter 3, just one verse. Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress according to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel, the apple of his eye. Okay? Who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. All the while, these people who say that they are worshiping and serving the true God, what God are they serving? Themselves. They are like their father, the devil. I will be like the Most High. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 on to verse 15. That's what these Christians are today. That's what these religious people are today. The easy believism heretics, the Calvinists, and stuff like that. Okay? A Christ who is still on the cross. There's no death to self. And hey, the Calvinists, the old time Calvinists, you know, the Puritans, they, they did a lot of talking about uh, mortification, death to self. Yes, they did. But then again, they thought they were elect. And they believed and taught elect and not elect. It's like, it's like how does that work? If you're elect, then you're something special. <laughs> Even though what a lot of the uh, Puritans taught about uh, mortification and stuff like that was really good. But yet, elect and non-elect, chosen ones, like Mark the Messenger does. Why? Because they, they love other gods, the one that they look at, or whatever one suits their fancy, and flagons of wine. Hmm. And drunk with the wine from the harlot, uh, Mystery of Babylon, the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And, and, and go to Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah chapter 8. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 8. This is why you have to, when it comes to Christians, this is why sometimes we really have to be harsh with these Christians. Because they're, they're set in their way that they can be just like the world without any consequence and yet still serve Christ. Be like the world to win the world. Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 8 under verse 12. 8 under verse 12. How do ye say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes is vain. Well, yeah, because, yeah, well, we don't need to abstain from all appearance of evil. It doesn't matter. You just believe you, you, you shouldn't do that. No, you shouldn't. But don't worry if you do. Because, hey, you're going to go to heaven. So don't, don't worry. Just just let it ride. Let it, let it go. Everything is smooth, okay? <laughs> yeah. That's Christianity. That's those easy believism devils. Then you have the flip side. 
The ones who are saving themselves by keeping the commandments, like Mark the Messenger, because the Christ that they are seeking and looking to is still on the cross. It's not finished. they got to do it themselves. The wise men are ashamed. They are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is in them? Earthly, sensual, devilish. Therefore I, will I give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For everyone from the least, even unto the greatest, is given to covetousness. From the prophet, even unto the priest. Everyone dealeth falsely. Verse 11. For they have healed the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace. And there is no peace. You can have peace with God if you come to Him on His terms, yes. But you're not going to have peace in the world. Especially, especially if you're going to stand for the authorized version of the Scriptures. Especially if you are going to live according to the scriptures as the church of God and not a Christian. Don't judge me. I get drunk every once in a while. You're saved. But don't judge me. Uh, he's preaching works salvation. Don't judge him. Don't judge him. We need him. <laughs> My dear hermetic brethren and sisters, you need Mark the Messenger like, uh, like a rash of hemorrhoids. Please. Please. Don't be foolish. Please. Don't be foolish. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore shall they, shall, shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation they shall be cast down, down sat the Lord. Yeah, and then we could go to Isaiah chapter 1. You know, why should you be stricken anymore? You know? Let's read a portion of that. Let's, let's read a portion of that. Okay? It leads on to Isaiah chapter 1. Okay? Everyone is after covetousness and the Lord abhors the covetous, okay? But go to Isaiah chapter 1. Uh, <laughs> uh, verses uh, 2 on to verse 4. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth. The Lord hath spoken. I have nursed up and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. The majority of Jewry, of Israel, when Christ was on the earth, they didn't really, the rich young ruler. And you want us to believe, you want to believe that if Christ had come down from the cross, like the Pharisees and guys said, that they would have believed? Did they believe him before? No. No. If he would have done that, which he couldn't, he couldn't because he had to fulfill scripture. He could have, but he couldn't because scripture had to be fulfilled. Okay? But if he did, if he did, they would have been like, ah, and said, the devil, the devil. They wouldn't have believed. They wouldn't have believed. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. <laughs> yes, and in verse 6, from the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there is no soundness in it. But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, they have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. From the head to the foot, sin, corruption, putrefying sores. They wouldn't have believed him if, they came, if he came off the cross. But see, what did they do? They worshiped themselves. They worshiped flesh. Why? Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. On your own time, read Isaiah chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 15. Read the whole chapter. Okay? But Mark chapter 7. And as a result of them not wanting to die to themselves, what, 
What happens when someone doesn't want to die to themselves? They, they look for someone who boots the door and shouts through the crack, okay? They go to Christianity. They go to a cult with works like Catholicism or like uh, heretics like Mark the Mess and say, hey, you got to keep the law, keep the commandments, okay? What happens? Mark chapter 7, verses 6 on to verse 9. He answered and said unto them, Well hath his eyes prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men, as the washing of pots and cups, and many other such like things ye do. Verse 13, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. It's a death. It's a death. The cross is a death that leads to new life. But see, the offense of the cross, the offense of the cross is that it does away with this. Go to uh, Matthew chapter 23. Well, thank you. Open right to it. Matthew chapter 23, verses 5 on to verse 7. And when you got someone who doesn't want to die to self, whose Jesus is still on the cross, Matthew chapter 23, verses 5 on to verse 7. All their works they do to, for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the upper ro uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. They love the praises of men. That video of uh, Mark the Messenger, uh, Mark the Messenger of Satan, okay? That, that imbecile boasting about how someone gave a hundred bucks to his ministry, in total contra contradiction to scripture, and people are saying, don't judge! <laughs> <laughs> crazy absolutely crazy go to Galatians now chapter 5 Galatians chapter 5 cross is, cross is a death to yourself that leads to new life leads to new life leads to new life one second alright sorry about that Galatians chapter 5 Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 12. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Now, we here in America, and most nations, when we are born, male men are circumcised, yes. We're, we're, that's done without knowledge of, the, of whatever and whatever, but yes, we are. But what's the deeper meaning that Paul's getting at, okay? For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Verse 4. Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen by grace. Justified by the law. And see, when you have a Christ who is on the cross still, who is still on the cross, then the law is still uh, operative. The, the law is still present, isn't it? See, there are so many out there, so many Christians out there, who seek to justify themselves by what they do. And this says, Christ has become effect of no effect unto you. Whomsoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. Mark the messenger. He preaches keeping the law. He's not saved. He's lost. What, or whatever law. The law, the Ten Commandments. Huh? We can't keep them today perfectly. And today in this dispensation, we, are not, we, we don't have to keep them to be saved. It is finished. It is finished. Okay? It is finished. Alright? But what law? The law of the Catholics? The law of the Catholics, the law of the Methodists, huh? See, you go to justify yourself by whatever you're doing. 
Christ has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For though, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. See, salvifically, there is no difference. There is no Jew. There is no Gentile. There is no woman, man, barbarian, Scythian, black, white, Asiatic, Republican, Demokami. In salvation, salvifically, there is no distinction. Culturally, but there's something different. Okay? Like we've been talking about. Let's continue. Ye did well. Who did hinder you that ye should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. Little leaven, I mean, the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that ye will be none otherwise minded, but he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment, whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Yea, uh, suffer persecution, excuse me. Then is the offense of the cross ceased. The offense of the cross. And we already read about how Paul dies daily. How Paul dies daily. The offense of the cross. The offense of the cross. Okay? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 17. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, excuse me. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 on to verse 21. You see how we did that? One second, brethren. All right. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 on to verse 21. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Wisdom of words. Man's wisdom. Man's wisdom. Wisdom of words. Speaking smooth things. Prophesying deceits. For the preaching of the cross, the cross is death, is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Uh, check your Bible. Your NIV, your ESV, your non-King James Version. Your New American Standard. Check it. It says being saved. Not finished. It is finished. But see, if you're serving a cross, a Christ who is still on the cross, it's not finished. The law is still in place. That way you can justify yourself by keeping the law. Well, I've done this. I do this. I do this. Justifying yourself. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe <laughs> in Rome coming out of the Jesuit cemetery schools? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? And we already read verses 21 and the corresponding verses. Uh, Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Uh, verse 17. Uh, verse 17. Not with wisdom of words. The wisdom of this world. What is that? The wisdom of this world. Uh, earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay. And uh, while we're here now. Okay. Go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. We want verses 11 on to verse 18. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 18. The cross is death. Death to yourself. But the cross is also new life. And in that new life, if you come to Him on His terms, not booting the door out of the way and shouting through the crack, what you want. The cross is death. But it is new life. A new life that brings many people together that normally wouldn't be. Remember the thing about the temple? Uh, the, the, the veil of the temple? 
verses 11 on to verse 18 in Ephesians chapter 2. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh, made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Uh, verse 11, you know what? You want a modern equivalent to that? Elect and non-elect. Chosen, not chosen. Yeah, esoteric and exoteric. Let's continue. Verse 13. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off were made nigh by the flesh of Christ. Oh, excuse me. The blood of Christ. What is this talking about? The Gentiles being grafted in. But now, in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Made nigh. Made close by the blood of Christ. Being grafted into their tree. Bringing those people together who come to him on his terms, not their own. Bringing many people together who come to the Lord on his terms, the way that he chose, the way of the cross, which is brokenness of your self righteousness, uh, godly sorrow, uh, knowing, accepting it is your fault, and in fear of the Lord. Oh, you better fear him, boy. You better fear the Lord. Okay? Verse 14. For He is our peace. Who hath made both one. And hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Jew and Gentile. Broken that down. Because salvation is of the Jews. Remember? But now. Now. Us Gentiles. Of Ham. Of Japheth. And of Shem. Yes, there are Gentiles of Shem. Because remember, the Hebrew is descended from Shem. Okay? Remember. But see now, Gentiles who are not of the chosen people of Israel. Okay? Now, today in this dispensation, because of the cross, because of what our Lord Jesus Christ did on it, and because He's risen from the dead, He shed His blood. Now, he is our peace. In the world, you're going to have not going to have peace. He is our peace. It doesn't matter how much property you have or how many fortresses you put on your pop property. It doesn't matter. You're not going to have peace in this world. Jesus Christ, He is our peace. He is our peace. Okay? He for he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Salvation has come unto us Gentiles. Because of, for reasons we've already discussed. Okay? Grabbed it in. New life. Begins with death. But yet it's new life. Okay? Let's continue. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. The law. He's, it's referring to the law. Obviously, it says it right there. Making animal sacrifices for sins and stuff like that. Okay? Christ fulfilled the law with his death, burial, and resurrection and with his shedding of his blood. Okay? He fulfilled the law. We've talked about that in depth. Okay? We have, we've already talked about that. But see, him doing that brought in brought in this new dispensation the death of the destator brought in this dispensation yes yes with his death yes yes but with you know he went up to heaven we serve a risen Christ and when he went up to heaven he gave the Holy Ghost himself unto the church of the living God okay new life, being born again, being a new creature in Christ. 
You know, and in John chapter 12, in John chapter 12, John chapter 12, just one verse, verse 24, okay? Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. That's the cross. You come to the cross on his terms, you die to yourself. It's your fault that he died. And in fear of him, you call upon his name and may he save you. There are so many out there who are saving themselves because they just believe or they mechanically utter some words without being broken, without godly sorrow, without fear of the Lord. But, well, I'm saved because I just said something or I uh, called on the name of the Lord, but yet you're not broken. You have no godly sorrow or fear of the Lord. Or, I'm saved because I just believe. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. And that peace is in Christ. See, for he is our peace, making peace. Our peace is what? Jesus Christ himself. In the world, you, you ain't going to have peace. It's the world. Is there peace going on today? No. No. Okay? Verse 16. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body, the church of the living God, not the Christians, by the cross. Having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. Afar off. Us Gentiles. Them that were nigh. The Jews. Okay? For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Cross is death and new life, but because it is death and new life, it's an offense. Because the cross does away with those keeping the commandments to justify themselves. That's why so many people hate it. That's why the Jews reject it. That's why the Jews reject Jesus. Because they want to magnify themselves. They want to glorify themselves by keeping the law. I do this, I do that. I'm saved because I just believe. Or, I'm saved because I just said something. And the cross is death to all of that. Because He is our peace. He is our hope. He is our life. He, I, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay? And because it is a death to self and to the things of this world, and new life, bringing in people who, bringing in whomever will come to the Lord His way, the way of the cross. But see, there's an elitism for those who keep the law, like Mark the Messenger. Okay? He's an elitist. He thinks he's a Hebrew. <laughs> Crazy. Guy's lost. Okay? Calvinist. Elect and non elect. The cross does away with all of that. Even though, even though some of the Puritans were the some of their stuff about mortification was great. Yeah, they did really good works talking about mortification, death to self. But yet they taught elect and not elect. <laughs> crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Crazy. Oh yeah, yeah. Now go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. We want verses two, 5 on to verse 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Humbled himself and was obedient to death, the death, even the death of the cross. The cross is death, but the cross, because of it, 
brings us new life. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. See, the cross is an offense to the self-righteous, to those who are justifying themselves by what they do, what they think, or what they say. Not being justified by Christ himself, who is our justification. Okay? Now go to Colossians. Colossians. Chapter 1, verses 14 and verse 20. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether, by, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And the Bible's messed this up, uh, verse up as well. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body. The church. Who is the beginning. The firstborn from the dead. And in all and that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. See, the cross is first death to ourselves, but life, reconciliation. Reconciliation to God through the blood, through his death, burial, and resurrection. But see, again, if you are serving a Christ who is still on the cross, like the Catholics do, like so many people do, then you're justified by what you do and not what he has done. It is finished. It is finished. Okay? And Colossians chapter 2, verses 8. On to verse 15. And what happens with these people who want to keep their traditions? Who want to justify themselves? Colossians 2 verses 8. On to verse 15. <laughs> Beware. Lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the tradition. After the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Uh, earthly, sensual, devilish. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Again, who was on the cross? Complete and total God. Okay? <laughs> and ye are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him, through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Raised him from the dead. <laughs> yes. See, we serve a risen Christ. The Christ that is being preached in Christianity is a Christ who is still on the cross. And you being dead in your sins and the circumcision of your flesh and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, 
and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. He's talking about the laws that were contrary to us. The law couldn't bring you life. It would keep you from sin, but it killed you because you can't keep the law perfectly. We talk about that in the video exposing Mark the Messenger, which will be in the description box, okay? <coughs> and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. In the victory that the cross is, which is first death and redemption, new life, resurrection. And see, because the cross is death and resurrection, it's an offense. Offense unto those who want to justify themselves by booting the door out of the way and shouting through the crack, whatever demonic, excuse me, devilish heresy they want to come up with. Now go back to Galatians. More about this on the offense. Galatians chapter uh, 6, verses 12 on verse 16. Again, the thing of flesh. As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Suffer persecution. Being dead to self. Being dead to the commandments of man. Being dead to the commandments to be righteous. Okay? Christ fulfilled that with his death, burial, and resurrection. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. <laughs> but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision a new creature. But a new creature. So see, cross is death. But see, it is also new life because of his resurrection. And there are so many out there, like I've been telling you, whose Christ they serve is still on that cross. And they live their life as though he is still on the cross. You're safe just because you believe? You shouldn't sin? You shouldn't do these things? But don't worry if you do. You're still safe because you're safe because you just believe? They're Christ. Your Christ is still on the cross. You're justifying yourself by your own belief. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. And go now to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Verses 17 on to verse 19. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an ensample. Ensample. I love that word. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is their destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Whose God is their belly. Flesh is their God. And these are the same. You're going to extremes that God doesn't want us to go to. These are the same people who are enemies of the cross of Christ who will do anything to justify living like the world. That's these people who mind earthly things. Whose, what does it say? Whose God is their belly. Note the capital G there is their belly. Their flesh. They make flesh their God. And they're enemies of the cross of Christ. Because the cross tells you to die to yourself and to die to everything out there. 
But Christianity, a little doesn't hurt. You're saved because you just believe or because you called on the name of the Lord without brokenness, contrition, or fear, but just did it verbally. So go ahead. You, you shouldn't sin, but don't worry. That's not the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. That's Christianity. That's a faith that's being preached today that goes about to justify itself, whose God is their belly. Christianity is the enemy of Jesus Christ. Christianity is an enemy of the cross. Because the, the Christ of Christianity is one who is still on the cross. And they talk about their resurrection Sundays. But yet, they show much love with their mouth, but their heart goes after their cup. The God is their belly, people. The God is their belly. What can I say? Now, when talking about the cross, we have to. Isaiah chapter 52. Go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 52. We got to read a little uh, in Isaiah chapter 52, and then we're going to read Isaiah chapter 53. Because when talking about the cross, you can't avoid you cannot avoid coming to Isaiah 53. You can't. We begin in Isaiah chapter 52, verses 13 on to verse 15. Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many as were astonished at thee, at thee his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form than, more than the sons of men. His visage, his face, you know, they tore out his beard. He was whooped, he was beaten, he was bloodied. Probably gangrenous. You know? A death. That's what the cross is. And again, like we have already seen, it's new life. And it is also an offense because it kills self-righteousness. Christ was, of course, Christ wasn't self-righteous. More on that here in a little bit. Okay, but let's continue. So he shall sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him. For that, for that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire. And that's the thing which we've already addressed, the Pharisees. If he would have come down from the cross, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have followed him. They would have said, ah, and stone, tried to stone him. See, that's the thing. The faith that was once delivered onto the saints. The world and the Christians, they don't want it because it's death to them. There's no beauty in it. There's no beauty in it, right? Because it's all death to you. And all glory to God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what the cross is. But see. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him. There is no beauty. That we should desire him. He, was, he is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised. And we esteemed him not. Deuteronomy chapter 21. Deuteronomy chapter 21. Deuteronomy chapter 21. We want verses. Deuteronomy chapter 21. We want verses. Um, 22 under verse 23. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death. And he be to be put to death. 
and thou hang him on a tree. His body shall not remain all night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. For he that is hanged, for he that is hanged is accursed of God, that 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 thy land be not defiled, which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. And for that you go to Second Corinthians chapter five, verse twenty one. Okay? Second Corinthians chapter five. Verse 21, okay? For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. For he hath made him to be sin for us, to be sin for us, never that he became sin, but that to be sin for us. To be the object of scorn, being the perfect sinless Lamb of God, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Okay? Now go to Galatians chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 14. Okay? Galatians chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 14. For as many as are uh, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. But the man that doeth them shall live in them. Well, the law is not faith. The faith is that God would honor you for doing what he prescribed. But the law itself was not, was not a faith. Because, hey, you did whatever, you, whatever the law said. Therefore, you're righteous because you did what the law said. Hence, you're justifying yourself. See? See how that works? Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law be made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Okay? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And see, and that's why he was, uh, that's why it says here in Isaiah chapter 53, He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Why? Because he takes care of everything. He does it all. It's his salvation by his grace through our faith. But what happens? What happens with the heretic? You've got to keep the law. Once saved, always saved is heresy, right? Right? Uh, uh, redemption before the purchase possession, that's not true. You've got to keep the law justifying themselves. That's more appealing to a Christian, to one of the chosen ones, than forsaking everything and dying to yourself and having Jesus Christ gain everything to you because He is. See? The cross is totally against everything that man considers good. And that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Okay? Okay? Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We want verses 12 on to verse 20. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? And like I've talked to you about this before, so many of these Christians, though they preach and believe and say that they believe in a resurrected Christ, the way they live, the way they act, the way they think, what they believe, how they justify themselves. They live as though he's still on the cross. 
at root with a lot of these Christians who justify themselves, whether by their own belief or by because they could say, or because they can call on the name of the Lord without having brokenness, contrition, or fear of Him. Okay? But yet they justify themselves. Live like the devil because they haven't been to the cross. There is no death. Hence, there is no new life. And hence, when someone comes around preaching the death, burial, and resurrection, it's an offense. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead raise not, rise not, excuse me. For if the dead rise not, then is Christ, then is not Christ raised. Don't look at me. Look at this verse. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Hold on. Look at that verse. Don't look at me. Look at the verse. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. So, Christ still on the cross. He's not. But he's not raised, is he? It's not finished. Hence, the Catholic comes along with all their man-made laws and commandments. Mark the messenger comes along preaching against the redemption of the purchased possession. Once saved, always saved. Uh, study to shoe yourself approved. Doesn't finish the verse. Uh, being a workman who needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, preaching the law. Okay, words to no profit. See, if Christ isn't raised, you're still in your sins. And if Christ is still on the cross, again, the law is still in effect. Hence, again, you're saved because you save yourself by just believing. Or you're elect and non elect. Uh huh. Verse 18. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Oh, how many Christians have, we, have I met? Who say, oh, I believe, yeah, that he's born again, born, uh, that I'm born again, and that he raised from the dead. But your talk doesn't match your walk. Don't judge me. Don't judge you. You say, you say you believe in a resurrected Christ, but the way you live, justifying your sins, well, I'm saved because I just believe, right? so I can live like a... Uh, Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9, verses 15 on to verse 18, okay? Hebrews chapter 9, verses 15 on to verse 19, right? 18. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called the way of the cross, the way he chose, might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. So the death of Jesus Christ brings in the New Testament. But see, he died, he buried, and he rose again. And when he ascended up on high, he gave gifts unto men. 
that gift of Himself, the Holy Ghost, which we already looked at, the Kingdom of God. Okay? And uh, looking now at verses 24 on to verse 28. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often. The Catholic Mass is a continual sacrifice of their Christ. Then it's not finished. Like I said, the, the thumbnail that you're going to see, the Catholic Jesus on the cross still, versus the, the cross that is empty. Okay? Okay? The Catholic sacrifice... I. It's right now, one uh, one oh nine p.m. my time. I, how? Who knows? Where on this earth there's a Catholic mass happening? Hence, they are crucifying their Christ, which is not the Christ of the Scriptures. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Once. Only one time. And see, like we had already said, the cross is a kind of an altar, but see, altars are where continual sacrifices are made. And... Christ died once for sin. Just one time. Just once. The Catholic, they sacrifice their Christ every day. Daily. Because it's not the truth. It's not the Christ of the Scriptures that they are preaching. They're preaching the Son of Perdition. Satan. Okay? Verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this to judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Died one time. Not sacrificing often. Okay? So the cross was a type of an altar, yes. But not an actual altar. Like I said... Cross, altar, you cannot find them combined within the scriptures. Okay? The cross was a type of an altar, yes, but not an actual altar. Because an actual altar is something that you continually give sacrifices on, right? Right? So the cross was a type of an altar, yes. Not an actual altar, though, because it is finished. It is finished. Okay? Now, and go to Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7, verses 11 on to verse 19. And here is where the offense comes in. Right here, what we're looking at. Because the, the, the cross is a death to self and a rebirth, a resurrection, a new life. What? A, Christ, uh, the law is our schoolmaster to bring us on to Christ. Like I said, the Mark the Messenger video, unfortunately, well, but we go through a lot of this already, okay? Uh, will be addressed in that video, which will be in the description box, okay? But see, there are those out there who want to control people. And what better way to do it than through Christianity? And when Christ comes along, dies, buried, and raises, rises again the third day according to the scripture, the law of commandments for being right with God saved are not applicable for us today in this dispensation. There are people who don't want... You know, Shimon the sorcerer, okay? When Philip came around preaching Jesus, uh, the, you know, and he was jealous because he lost his position, and hey, he believed he was baptized, but he wanted the Holy Ghost so he, when he put people on that, uh, his hands on people, that they would receive it too. He was doing it out of his own selfish gain. And Peter called him on. It's like, your money perish with thee. Because thou thoughtest thou, you could buy the gift of God with money. 
You know, you need to repent because your heart is not right with God. Because you are in the gall of bitterness. Uh, wickedness and bitterness. I'm I'm Bradizing that, okay? And what is uh, what is uh, uh, Shimon the sorcerer saying? Pray for me? He wasn't saved. Someone who loses their position. The Pharisees, they without the law, for righteousness to be saved, right? Without that. What use was it for that uh, for for their get them for their sex? S E C T. What use was it? And here is where the offense lies in. For those who are Nicolaitans, who want to rule over the laity, people who set their preachers up on high and look at them as gods. The cross does away with that. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood, don't look at me. For the priesthood being changed, there is made a necessity, a change also of the law. Okay? For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. <laughs> and it is yet far more evident. For that after the similitude of, of Melchizedek. There ariseth another priest. Who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment. But after the power of an endless life. For he testified. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before for the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. And here it is. This is why the continuations of it. Because you got to keep the law to stay saved. Mark the Messenger preaches that. Catholics preach that. For the law made nothing perfect. But the bringing in of a better hope did, by wit, by the which we draw nigh unto God. A better hope, and who is our hope? Our Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed hope. Our blessed hope, our Lord Jesus Christ. The law made nothing perfect, but yet today you got people telling you that you can be made perfect by keeping the law. They haven't been to the cross the cross as an offense to them because they want to magnify themselves by what they do. Now go back to Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. You know, there are a lot of people out there who don't understand what the, the cross means and its significance. But if you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you know what it means. Because you've been there. Picking up at verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, afflict, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one out one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. And he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. That's what dumb actually means. Not being able to speak. Okay. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he was made and he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, 
because he had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. He never sinned. He never sinned. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession. Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We're almost done. We're almost done. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We want verses 1 and 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech. Or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And Him crucified. What does that mean? Those of us, Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 24. I know we already read a part, uh, a portion of this, I think. But, for the flesh, for the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God, which is spiritual in this context. And all those things that we just read are those who go after the flesh. Who have not more who are not mortifying, putting down the flesh, putting down themselves. Okay? Putting down the flesh. They say that they are crucified with Christ, dead to the world. But yet they justify being as the world. Don't judge me. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. And the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. We sin every day. We're going to mess up. But we don't make it a continual habit to go after. I know of so many Christians who have who live like the world, but because they believe or because they called on the name of the Lord, they think they're saved. But yet, they, they do everything that the world does. They haven't been to the cross. They haven't died to themselves. They haven't, they don't realize it's my fault. They don't accept responsibility that it's their fault. See, that's the thing. That's the thing. It's contrary to your flesh. Your flesh wants to, it's, it's his fault, or it's her fault. No. 
Christ died because of you. It's your fault. Yeah, it's my fault. He died because of me. It was my fault. I put him on that cross. I did. It's my fault. Guess what? He's alive. He's risen from the dead. And I sin daily. So do you. But see, it's a daily struggle. We fight. We kill our flesh. We mortify. We put down the flesh. We look for that way of escape. Someone who just puts on the adornment of Christianity and slaps on a facade. <laughs> Christ is a scapegoat. An excuse. A justification. They say, don't judge me. I'm saved because I believe. I say I'm saved because I called upon the name of the Lord. But there's no brokenness. There's no contrition. There's no fear of the Lord in any of them. They're... they're <laughs> so when Paul says that in Corinthians about I determined not to know and let's go back there okay those who are truly saved born again converted of the church of the living God we are crucified with Christ meaning that we are daily dying to ourselves not casting all things away so that we can live like the world. It's a daily death. So when Paul says in verse 2 in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. What is he talking about? He wants to know who is truly saved. Those who have crucified them, who are crucified with Christ. Dead to the world and dead to themselves. It's not about us. But Christianity, it's all about you. Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. The cross is death. For one. Okay? The cross is death. Romans chapter 6, verses 4 under verse 6. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we, should, we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Okay? And John, we already looked at this. John chapter 12, verse 24, just one verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Okay. And of course, Second Corinthians chapter five. Second Corinthians chapter five. It's a death, and it's also new life. Okay. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse seventeen. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Okay. And Galatians chapter three. It's also redemption. And bringing those that were far off, nigh, by the blood of Christ. Okay? Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 on to verse 29. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you, uh, for as, many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. 
There's neither Jew nor Greek. This is talking about salvation. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Okay? And also Acts 22. Acts 22. Okay? <laughs> it's also an offense. Acts 22. Because there's salvifically, salvation is of the Jews in the Old Testament. You wanted to be right with God, you had to go to the Jews. Okay? You had to be under the law. You had to convert to scriptural Judaism to be right with God. But today, because of the cross, He's taken down that wall of partition. Us Gentiles have been grafted in. Okay? But see, it's an offense. That's offensive to people who want to maintain the law in order to glorify themselves. Acts chapter 22, verse 21 and 22. And he said, when Paul was giving his defense unto his own people, and he said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. And they gave him audience unto this word, and then lifted up their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. Meaning these Jews were upset that God would send someone to us measly Gentiles to graft us into their tree. See, elitism, which someone who keeps the law today, like Mark the Messenger, the Catholics, the Calvinists, okay? They're elitists. They're esoteric. They're Nicolaitan. And my scriptures say the Lord hates the Nicolaitan. Okay. In Romans chapter eleven. Let's let's not let's not forget this. Okay. Romans chapter eleven. Okay. Romans chapter eleven, verse eleven. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. Why? For to provoke them to jealousy. I've. I've had a lot of times and chances to witness unto the Jewish, the true Hebraic Jewish people. They're not jealous of this. Hey, you King James Bible believing Christians, are they jealous of you? Are they jealous of you while you're worshiping pagan deities? We were brought in to make them jealous. We must never forget that. And you think the Hebraic people, the true Jews, are jealous of this, which is called Christianity? Ha! <laughs> Verses 15 and 16. For if the casting away of them be with the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? God is not done with the Jews. Okay? Even in this dispensation, a Jew can be saved today. Yes. Yes. But they have to go that way that most people don't want to go. The cross, which is death to self. A new birth. But it's offensive because it's a death to the law for righteousness. For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Okay? And also 28 and 29. As concerning the gospel, there are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Now that's not talking about the satanic uh, elect and non-elect of Calvinism. No. God chose the Hebrew, the Jewish people that came from Shem. He chose Abraham, at that time Abram, and from Abram became the line of the Hebraic people from Shem. Okay? It's Shem's tent. Okay? It is Shem's tent. But the Hebrew is taken from Shem. Hence, Shemitic. Okay? That's why, like the, the Japanese and Chinese, they're of Shem, but they're Gentile. Okay? 
even even if they are of Shem, okay? But see, the election, the love for the Father's sakes, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? The Hebrew people, the true Hebrew people, which Mark the Messenger is not, okay? The Hebrew people are the apple of God's eye, no matter what. Verse 29, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. In Galatians chapter 5, uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 11, Galatians chapter 5, verse 11, And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offense of the cross cease. So see, the cross is death, a new life, and it's an offense to those who want to justify themselves. It's the offense of the cross. And uh, chapter 6, verse 12, As many as desire to make a fair shoe in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised, only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. Death, rebirth, a new life, bringing other people, Gentiles, into the equation that weren't there before by the death of uh, by uh, his death on the cross but unto us the cross is death to ourselves and we are incorporated into the tree of the Jew which today includes the Gentiles but because of that the cross is an offense but we must never forget this brother. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 on to verse 10 for by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves it is the gift of God. If you're working to stay saved, to say, be saved, stay saved today, then what? God owes you. God owes you because, well, I just believed. God owes you because you called on Him without being broken of your self righteousness. And not accepting your responsibility for your fault of putting him on the cross. And not having fear of him. <laughs> not of works. Lest any man should boast. For we are his. We are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Unto good works. It doesn't save you to sit idly. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk. You see these people preaching about the cross, the cross, the cross, the cross. And then you listen to what they're talking about. Uh, easy, easy believism or God loves you. It doesn't matter. God loves you unconditionally. They mention the, uh, the resurrection, but in reality, their Christ is still on the cross. And if Christ is still on the cross, then you are still in your sins. And it's not finished. So, the cross is death to yourself. What does it mean for us? cross is death. It is redemption. New life. Whereas, do you not know that you're accepted in the beloved? Grafted into the tree of the Jew? Not being a Jew. And it's also an offense to the self righteous That's what the cross means. And that's why it's sick. That is going to be it for this video. I had a mess up in this video. I paused it and then I forgot to take it. I thought I had took an, uh, unpaused it, but I didn't. So I'm going to have to put two of these together. You, you would not never have known unless I just told you. So it's going to be a little bit longer to get this uploaded than I would want. But thank you.
I, I, I hope this has helped you. I hope this answers some questions. Like I said, a brother requested this of me, and this is what the Lord gave. Okay? We who are truly saved, born again, converted at the church of the living God, we die daily. We take up our cross daily, meaning we die to ourselves daily. Christian, sitting there watching television, getting drunk, smoking cigarettes, smoking weed, popping pills, drinking booze, justifying whatever. Don't judge me. I'm saved because I just believe. I haven't been to the cross. Oh, they've been to a cross which has their Christ still on. Like I said, I hope this uh, helps answer some questions for some of you. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Uh, like I said, I hope this helps. hope this answers some questions. I hope this encourages some of you. And um, you know a lot of people talk. Talk a good talk. A lot of people talk a good talk. But do they walk that talk? You shall know them by their fruit. They justify living by the world, by worldly standards. Well, don't worry. You, you shouldn't do that, but it's don't worry about it. They haven't been to the cross. There's no death there. Only life given to them by their father, the devil, who is the little cheek out of this world, who says to them, if you fall down and worship me, all will be thine. And by the way, what Christ is it that you want to be a Christian, huh? Because the Christ that is preached in Christianity is of Satan. That man of sin is some tradition of Satan himself. That's going to be it for this video. Thank you, brethren, for those of you who help us and pray for us. Please keep us in your prayers. Uh, my brother from Northeast, I'm sorry I missed your call. I to, want to talk with you, brother. It's been too long. Uh, pray for one another. Please pray for one another. Please pray for us. We, we need your prayers. We need, we need all the prayers and help we can get. We just thank you, brother. We love you. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.